One of the first applications for federated sidechains will probably be uh, Ethereum virtual machine chains. That is a sidechain that implements the Ethereum virtual machine, but that can, transact, that can move tokens to and from the XRP ledger. I expect that federated sidechains will make available new applications that are, have not been previously possible for the XRP ledger, and a big one is going to be uh, more powerful DeFi. We have a decentralized exchange built into the XRP ledger. We had the first decentralized exchange, uh, probably late 2012. Um, but that's about the, that, the, they were not the full, sort of full DeFi functions that you could get from an Ethereum virtual machine sidechain or a sidechain more uh, tuned towards DeFi Whatever features. Whatever combination of features you want, you can have. The obvious one is having XRP on an EVM compatible chain, but like- The, the general idea is to enhance the utility of the XRP ledger by essentially having additional ledgers that sort of literally sit to the side of it. Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh, and the XRP Ledger's EVM sidechain has just been announced from RippleX and Peersist. So this is the first big sidechain that we've seen on the XRP Ledger, and it follows XLS20D NFT amendment, which is also going to be a massive influx of developers and different projects coming. But this EVM sidechain has been in the works for now at least almost two years. We've known about it publicly for roughly a year. But let's level set here on some of the technologies that are used and some of the technologies that are not used. First off, this is built on Tendermint's proof of stake consensus. And it's Cosmos SDK using Ethermint, which allows it to use EVM smart contracts. It technically doesn't use any XRP ledger technologies, but but you could use XRP easily bridged to this network that's going to be able to run smart contracts Just like on Ethereum 2.0 and on Cosmos. And most interesting here is XRP is going to be the staking token for this EVM sidechain that's going to be a gateway into the Cosmos ecosystem and into Ethereum. So we know Cosmos, if you're not familiar, is a very big ecosystem. Cosmos SDK is pretty much battle tested and proven. Tendermint runs up to 100 validators. Now this is going to be another use case for XRP. There is not going to be an EVM brought to the XRP ledger. It's explicitly said that would risk, the security, the efficiency, and scalability. That was never even an option. And instead of trying to build it onto the mainnet or even on a side chain that's built on XRP, they just figured this is the best way to do it. And I agree. So that's why this is the first side chain coming out. And you're easily able to move from your ZUM wallet with XRP to the side chain to a MetaMask wallet or some other Web3 wallet. And then there'll be all different type of DeFi dApps that will build on that sidechain. This is another use case. And this is part of that bottom up push that we're seeing from RippleX. So Ripple, the company Ripple, is not working with just banks or just institutions. This might come as a surprise to many people, but their business is split in half, 50-50. And this is according to David Schwartz, 50%, which is RippleNet, is working top down. 50% is working bottom up. Now that part is only recent, and it's been a significant change compared to in the past when it was laser focused just on banks and just on institutions. David Schwartz actually came out in this video and said, Bank of America is never going to be a success story. What does that mean? It means that banks are not the focus. And I know they make great headlines, and I know everyone will want to tell you that there's going to be this overnight price increase, and everyone's going to use this global reserve currency. Well, the reality is they're ahead of the game. First, you need an ecosystem 
that needs to be built out by early adopters and pioneers. You don't just skip to the line, and there's no chosen one. There's no chosen Ripple. There's no chosen XRP. Just because he meets with people at the IMF and met with people at Davos, Ripple's trying to position XRP. But you need an ecosystem. XRP is for everyone. And I repeat, these wild speculators and conspiracy theory concepts are harmful for the community because you're missing the point of what's happening. There is a push. But Ripple is two businesses. So one of them is this enterprise payment system. And then the other side is um, things like NFTs and um, a focus on community and focus on providing tools for comp for smaller developers that want to produce sort of, I guess, half of us is pursuing top down and half of the company is pursuing bottom up, I guess would be what mm. to describe it. Mm. And which are you more excited about? What do you think is, what excites you more, the building it from the top down or building it from the bottom up? I'm more excited about the bottom up and, and I, yeah. the bottom up challenge is there's a big challenge with vision. So so one of the interesting challenges, like, so there's lots of technical challenges and crypt, like using crypto in new and interesting ways to make things possible that weren't zero knowledge proofs and stuff like that. Technical things that automated market makers do, I find fascinating. Um, so th so there's kind of this kind of that whole aspect is th that I find very interesting. And then the other one is an interesting business challenge that normally I'm not like a business person. But one challenge that I do find interesting is you have to aim to where the market is. If it's going to take you a year to build the product, you can't build the product where the market is now. And you don't know where the market is going to be. Net. It took government and military to sort of build it. But then it took the bottom up adoption to create like internet service providers in every city was was because of bottom up demand. So I think you need both pieces. And I think it makes sense to sort of work on both. And I think there's synergies when the same company does both. Like, for example, a DeFi lending product is kind of a bottom up technology. Like that's going to come from a bottom up after, like DeFi. No one's no the DeFi is being built like for, for it being adopted by these early adopters. But imagine taking a DeFi loan product and then offering it through an enterprise payment system. Because you got to get the money out from the loans. You got to make the payments in. People who are not totally blockchain savvy are going to need conventional connections into the DeFi ecosystem. Like you need on ramps and off ramps, and and those are things that are best built top down. So I think the I think you do need both approaches. I think it's such a fascinating discussion, and, and it really does span different industries. One challenge that I do find interesting is you have to aim to where the market is. If it's going to take you a year to build the product, you can't build the product where the market is now, and you don't know where the market is going now to be. I'm going to name the big four amendments. They're going to have a major impact, and they're going to surprise probably many people in the community when they happen. But it's an opportunity for those who do understand and who do follow along and make the effort to look into how they can benefit and how they could add value to the network. This riding the coattails of Ripple concept, it's over. It, that was 2018, 2019, not happening anymore. Now there's a shift and things change. So we have to understand just because you've been in the space six years, five years, seven years, within a short period of time like that, things switch. And we're seeing side chains now. This is something you could participate in. This is not competition. You know, there's some people out there that want to say, oh, there's competition, a flare, this and that. Go back to 2018 because um, that's where you belong. Uh, but these are complementary because that's what allows for cross-chain dApps to on layer cake to go from flare to the EVM sidechain and then to other EVM networks. And that's what's going to allow for the next bull run that we come into. So we're going to see this it's going to be a tsunami of application development because Ripple X is building a best-in-class platform for DeFi and for NFTs and for all open source developers. So every, you know, we need to really just drown out anyone who says XRP is not for retail. Um, you know, this is going to be an overnight price explosion. Those are all fantasies and they're distractions and they're harmful. They're truly harmful. And wild speculating is harmful because it's based on nothing. There's plenty of facts out there. Some people are too lazy to want to go look at the facts. Not the people, but the people who have the influence are too lazy to do it. They shouldn't be speculating then on wild speculation because uh, that's what they've been doing for four years. We're at a new time. We're on the uh, cusp of something totally new. And after this case ends with the community here, 
we are going to see a rollout of here are the big four amendments. So this is the first glimpse of side chains, but this is an EVM side chain. It doesn't have XRP ledger tech in it. It's not built on the XRP ledger. It's a side chain, but it allows for XRP to be used on that side chain. It can be staked. So what does that mean? Locking up more XRP, locking up more XRP. This is something that's going to impact value and it's going to impact participation. And we'll see a wave of different types of DeFi applications that then XRP will be able to participate in. And all of the community will have to shift from looking at banks and all this, you know, 2018 hype. This is for us. Ripple X side of business is for the community. Ripple Net and all those big uh, banks and all this never used XRP. If they make great headlines, they make great narratives and stories, that doesn't matter. The internet got governments to adopt it. They got universities, they got sort of big players. And so we decided what are the biggest players? They're banks. We went after banks. We probably should have aimed a little bit lower than that. The problem with it's what can benefit you and how you could benefit the network. So the second amendment after side chains is going to be automated market makers. And that's going to come around the same time as the side chain amendment, which is going to be these other side chains we built on xrp tech and some sort of consensus and one of them will be hooks and that's going to probably be one of the most powerful side chains and that will eventually come to the xrp ledger but the automated market maker is the single most important groundbreaking piece of technology that david schwartz and the team have been building out for the last few years that is the underlying underlying pipelines for the liquidity that you, I, institution, enterprise, anybody can tap into and provide liquidity and source liquidity or, con or contribute to or source. And one thing that ODL plays into the mix here, and these two converge, the bottom up and the top down, because once they converge, the ODL is constant market takers. So there'll be volume flowing through because the payment execution engines connected to the AMM, the order books connected to the AMM, it will be consistent volume of, they don't care what the price is at ODL. They don't care if it went up $4 today, $2 there. They just need it for liquidity, for payments, and that's it. So that's going to give an inherent advantage. Now, all these AMMs are going to be connected through a ledger of ledgers. That's how we have to think of this. So I know there was this thought of, Everything's going to run on a ledger. Well, there's more than one ledger now. That's a change. That's significant. So there's going to be many ledgers. And there's just like Flare is doing the multi-net, you're going to need to do that because we'll have application-specific blockchains. And XRP will be the native asset on some of these sidechains. Some of them will have their own sidechains. The one thing we don't know about the EVM sidechain is how the validator rewards are going to be earned because transaction fees only make up so much. Um, so we'll have to see about that. But there's confirmation, as you could see, that XRP is staked. And that was not in the blog. That was not really reported by anybody. And also, I would just mind everybody to be careful of as this new information drops, and you're going to see waves of it, it's not going to So the other thing is like Bank of America is a big deal for a press release, but they're never going to be a Ripple success story. It doesn't matter what we do with them. Like they're never going to use our, they're never going to, it's never going to be the case where like our technology transforms. Or at least not until it's done, not until it's so obvious, right? Maybe, maybe in some imagined future where we're wildly successful and take over the world. But like, so the other thing is like Bank of America is a big deal for a press release, but they're never going to be a ripple success story. It doesn't matter what we do with them. Like they're never going to use our, they're never going to, it's never going to be the case where like our technology transforms their business. And so it's very hard for bigger companies to sort of push the benefits through to their customers. So we kind of adopted this strategy of targeting the financial, you know, payment service providers. And then there's the sort of the other half of Ripple, which is the half that people are probably more, well, I guess I don't know which side people are more familiar with, but the Ripple is two businesses. So one of them is this enterprise payment system. And then the other side is um, things like NFTs and um, 
f- focus on community and focus on providing tools for com- for smaller developers that want to produce sort of, I guess, half of us is pursuing top down and half of the company is pursuing bottom up. Um, so forget Bank of America. As David Schwartz said, they're not going to be a success story. So stop paying attention to them. It's not going to be replaced with gold backing or any of this other nonsense. This, this, it's almost insulting to the creators of the ledger, and it's insulting to the rest of the community and Ripple X building a best-in-class platform. Their Apex Development uh, Summit exploded with development with NFTs. Once we get hooks and EVM smart contracts, it's going to be a completely different community. These features. It's a, it's a public good. It's a public resource. The, com- the developer community, even you know, in the past year, 2022, the growth has just been incredible. Just comparing Apex this year, if you were here last year, most of you weren't. You know, the, the growth is just amazing. What's been going on this year? I mean, it's been, it, it's just been incredible. It's just been incredible, the pace of development. And event. You guys should give yourselves a hand, seriously, because we cannot do everything, we will do everything, and we don't know what people, this is, this is an amazing thing to say, but like very often, we don't know what people are using the ledger for because they don't tell us. Like if you don't tell us, we don't know. And you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on that we don't know. There, were, there, there was one time where there was a multi-million dollar a day remittance pipeline on the XRP ledger. We figured it out months later, looking at the data, like no, but like, It's it's a it's a public good. It's a public resource. The AMM solution is going to be deployed. You know, um, we're going to see more enterprise DeFi applications. But we need you guys to build the future. We need you to tell us what you need. We need you to build things. XLS 20 uh, 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 is imminent. We at Ripple are focused on enabling developers to build on the XRP ledger easily. We provide tools, services, and so on. We're one contributor to the global and growing development and evolution of the XRP Ledger. And it has just been amazing to be part of this community. It, it has just been the most fantastic experience. I think, for, I, think I speak for every, everybody at Ripple. It, it has just been amazing working with everyone. We're fo- we've been focused on new native capabilities. We've been focused on sort of the periphery around the Ledger. And we've been focused on making the XRP Ledger easier to use for developers. So once this case ends and we get clarity, they're building in anticipation of that. And what a lot of the community seems to be missing is they're just stuck in 2018 mindset. And there's going to be hundreds. Crypto Eddie did an excellent video on all the different use cases. I thought that was excellent because that's re- she's been like a rock with this. And that's the direction to really understand there's going to be many use cases. And that's what Larson always said from the beginning. You could cherry pick little comments that Ripple employees made here and there, but the overall vision, what is the vision of of Ripple? XRP is for everyone and anyone, but what's Ripple's vision? Is it banks holding XRP? No. It's the internet of value. It means value can be transferred, transacted between each other, like information is sent across the world. It's the internet of value. They just had UbriCon 2022. They had a huge uh, academic push there with all different papers come out on automated market makers, zero knowledge proofs, all these new cryptographic primitives that they're designing, they're enhancing. They have job descriptions of Web3 researchers, cryptographic uh, finance. Even on the website, it says crypto pivot. It's a complete pivot away. And it's not that that, now I just want to just stress here that it's not that they're not going to do payments anymore and they're not going to do cross-border payments and they're not going to do ODL. Yes, all those are happening. But in addition, since they are so slow, those banks, David Schwartz admitted it probably was the wrong move to go right at the tier one banks. Now, they don't know that, you know, everyone thinks, There's some plan out there, and everyone has it set. This is how it's going to go. Well, here's a wake-up call for you. Nobody has a plan. Not the elites. Nobody. There's no plan because the innovation is moving too fast. You know, when it comes to other 
certain topics, that's different. But a longer term plan that involves innovation, you can't predict. It's impossible. And David Schwartz said that they have to build for what's going to be in a year from now. But we're moving into a mature next cycle of enterprise DeFi. And it's still early days. No, people don't want to hear that. But you might have came into crypto as an investor expecting to get rich really quick. You turn into a uh, fan now during the case. But a fan is not what you're ultimately going to be. We're not fans. A fan is not really a good representation of what uh, somebody who is participating in a network is participation because you have a vested interest. Fans of sport team, sports teams don't have vested interests in the growth and value of that network. Uh, but we're more, than, we're more than participants. Why? Because we earn from those networks and we provide value and utility to that network. That's how you need to start looking at how this is going. That's why these networks exist. Now, for so long, we haven't had that chance next XRP Ledger, but you will very soon, very soon. And automated market makers is how we could contribute liquidity. And this can be done in, in ways that are extremely low risk, where you actually don't even go into the liquidity pool, but you still can provide uh, and lend your XRP at low risk and earn. So we need to look at XRP as a wealth creation, not something that you're going to sell out at moon, exit plan, and all this. Yeah, you can take profits. That's fine. It's not financial advice. But the idea here is this is the new financial system being built in front of you. It's not the CBDCs and BIS. Those are theoretical. But I can tell you something that's not theoretical. Lending and borrowing and automated market makers, those exist. They're real. They're here right now. Ripple's built one of the most advanced automated market makers that has ever, it is the most advanced, hands down, and it's built at the network level into the code, and it works with the payment execution engine, and it works with the order book decks. This is key because this is going to swallow up like a tsunami, like a whirlpool, it was just, just black hole of liquidity. It just get pulled in, and now unlike, so let's compare it to ETH staking. You know, everyone, I'm sure, you know, has their issues with ETH and what happened uh, with the Hinman ETH gate, and I agree, it was wrong. But let's look forward now. What is the uh, measurement that XRP as a blue chip crypto is going to be measured against? You have Bitcoin, digital gold. Nah, okay, no yield. But ETH 2.0, I think everyone should pay attention to. They're trying to make it like a bond where we'll have this interest rate, which will be paid by the users of the network at the expense of those users to the delegators and stakers for securing the network and then have a deflationary component to it. Now, XRP doesn't have any inflation. Yes, there's the escrow, and that will be deployed. Um, but it's the XRP being used in a liquidity pool by an institution. It's locked, but it's providing utility as liquidity for these payment flows if you just stake something in a proof of stake validator like ethereum that asset yes okay it might pay interest but it's not the utility is security well xrp they've been able to of go past that and say oh well we have security ready now the assets can be used for liquidity so in like a year two three years from now we're going to start seeing that head-to-head -head matchup and it's going to be more asset versus asset instead of network versus network, I see. And these LP tokens that you receive from the liquidity pool can then be used as collateral. They could go in other AMM pools. Because if you think about it, an LB, LP token, which is a liquidity pool token, means when you put in XRP and USD, 50-50 in value, you get back an LP token. It's a claim on those two assets. But that's kind of a hybrid stable coin because it's 50% XRP, 50% USD. And that could go and be used as collateral. And that could go actually in another AMM pool with either another LP token or another asset. That's kind of crazy to think of. And I know that might make your head explode right now. But this is what they've built. And there's also single-sided staking, which I think will interest a lot of you. Now... That comes in different forms, and we'll talk about that as they release more details. But they've thought of everything. 
So I think as a community, we, we need to really be preparing for what's coming to the XRP ledger. We are releasing a website that's going to be coming out very soon called mickeybfresh.com, and it's going to be a resource for Flare, XRP Ledger, and Songbird, and all the side chains of the XRP Ledger. This ecosystem, but it's not going to be geared towards big conspiracy theories of banks and uh, big press releases. It's going to be geared towards what you need to know as a member of the community, not a fan of XRP, not a fan of Flare. You're a participant. Now, you don't have to participate right away. There's no pressure, but you need to learn and understand what it means. Like if you're part of a community, you're out there tweeting and you're reading everything all day, well, and you're trying to exit plan, that's not giving value to the community. At the same time though, I will give credit where credit's due. I think that the XRP community is one of the most powerful uh, communities that there ever existed. And what they've accomplished with the case and making a stand and with Deaton uh, uh, leading the way, I think is amazing. It's just tremendous. And I'm very proud of the community and very proud to be part of it. But at the same time, I'm trying to look a little forward here beyond when this case ends. And I look at price and look at exits and all this. Are we prepared as a community to know to 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 achieve success for that network? So the more we participate and the more we bring in other people, and these are going to be financial products. These are real use cases. It's not, oh, I hope the price goes up. The exchange had a glitch, you know, on an API, and those are the real prices there. Like, ignore all that stuff. That's got to all go. Um, those people just get passed by. It's look at the facts. There's plenty of stuff out there. Now, I haven't talked about this because it's just finally the EVM came out. I mean, I knew that was coming out. There's been information put out on this. The AMM, the side chains, uh, hooks is basically at its at the finished. Um, they have a special builder's website for it now. It's at pre-compiled contracts. And that's going to be on a side chain. So we're going to see multiple side chains spin up. And you have all these different kind of applications. So we'll have private enterprise applications. We'll have public ones with a whole DeFi ecosystem. But David Schwartz has specifically said a best-in-class DeFi platform. If you don't have a best-in-class DeFi platform, you have to have that. But the institutions aren't going to lead the way. The enterprises aren't. The banks definitely are not going to lead the way. You need early pioneers. That's what here we're here for. And a lot of people had it mistaken. They thought, oh, we're like... Um, you know, the early just test lab rats. Oh, and then you're going to get booted out. Wrong. We are early pioneers. We get to reap the benefits of being here early because we're taking the risk that it might not be successful. But we've seen that DeFi has already proven that it's sustainable and it lasts throughout these times of stress. And Ripple's building the stuff. Ripple's building the enhancements. They have PhDs building the AMM. The side chains. I mean, these are some of the smartest engineering team in the world. Same with Flare. They have eight PhDs building their technology. And Flare ties absolutely into this EVM side chain. Now, it's on DevNet right now. There'll be three phases. And those phases will take over months. Um, and the side chain amendment isn't even passed. The reason why I think they released this is because it's a different, it's a special type of side chain because it has the EVM. And if you're not familiar with there's something called the root network, which is built with the fluff, the fluff um, NFTs and the fluff collection, that whole community partnership with Ripple. And they have a 100,000 plus community as well that's going to be built on substrate with EVM. So if you noticed, and that's going to use XRP as the gas token, that might surprise some of you. XRP gas token, how dare they put that as a gas token? I think it's a great thing because it's the gas exchange. It means that the validators in that network, root network, earn XRP. So if you stake their native token, I think it's going to be called Mycelium, and it's a gaming platform, open metaverse. It's a specialized blockchain built for open metaverse and futureverse, they call it. But XRP's use case, it's the versatility that it can be used for something like ODL and institutions, but it's a fact that it's going to be used as the gas token in the Futureverse, and on the root network. That's a fact. 
Now that's a good thing because it's the diverse use case. So these people that say, oh, XRP is only for banks. Oh, it was built for this. Just ignore them, please. But we have to stop that narrative because what it does is it closes people's minds. And then when they see this stuff, it's, it, it, it like scrambles your brain. You're like, oh my God, what's going on? This is not what they told me. This is not what I expected. But it is. It was there the whole time. And uh, you just need to look and have an open mind. I'm not trying to, you know, insult anyone or anything. I think people have done a great job in this community. We have one of the best communities. But it's a wake-up call for everybody. You know, when David Schwartz said, Bank of America is not going to be a Ripple success story, he didn't mean that. They're not going to use Ripple's technology and everything. But no, the banks are not going to turn on with ISO 2022 in November and just start exploding with crypto payments. That like that, that's all fantasy. Like, what's the reality here? What's the reality? Well, we have the case and we have the side chains and we have Flare with FXRP. So Layer Cake will be able to connect to this side chain. So I hope this just gives you an understanding of what's being built here. Um, the AMM is like the X pool, but at the network layer, side chains are built at that network layer. They don't need smart contracts. Um, same goes now hooks is light smart contracts. And that's going to be necessary for certain different marketplaces and connecting to these side chains. And there's even more coming too, uh, with PolySign and some other things in the works. I'm not going to get too much into this video. And NFTs, the XLS 20D, that's going to be huge, not just collectibles. It's going to be used for multiple different things and use cases. So over the coming months, I would say expect the side chain amendment, expect the EV um the AMM amendment, and then eventually, well, hooks will just be a side chain first, and then once it proves itself there, it m most likely will come on the main chain. But AMM and side chain amendments are going to be huge because you need the witness servers. There's whole, there's a whole bridging process called X bridge and X bridge chain, X bridge claim, and be very easy to use. That's the one thing that Ripple is building. And even Flare too, is this very easy to use user interface. And we're going to see digital identity. We're going to see decentralized digital identity with decentralized identifiers. They're going to be anchored to the blockchain and you'll be able to have more privacy than you ever imagined. So this is where, you know, everyone talks about, oh, the World Economic Forum, the elites, uh, you know, these conspiracy theories, they're going to take over and centralize. Well, you have the opportunity right here in front of you to do something about it and and participate in that. If you just want to give up and say, oh, they won, um, I think you're wrong because I think this is winning right now. This is not theoretical. It's not a conspiracy. It's fact. So instead of just looking at all these headlines and validating an echo chamber, I encourage everyone to look further into this and then just keep an open mind. That's all you need to do for right now is that maybe what I thought, how this was going to play out is maybe not the same. Now, I do want to say this. I am more bullish on XRP than I've ever been. And I think the value is going to go beyond what I initially thought even, but it's going to happen more of a gradual, but over that gradual time, you can set up different yield streams and revenues where you could build wealth and you could live off of and still hold your hold your main XRP because it's building of that generational wealth, not just, oh, I exit out and it went to the price of, you know, $400 overnight. That's not going to happen. So that mindset will really contradict with what really happens. So understand that a tremendous amount of change is coming. Um, if you want more details and discussions on strategies and things that we talk about with Flare Network and setting yourself up there and also with the XRP Ledger, you could join the Mickey B. Fresh Patreon group. Uh, we have a private Telegram group. And then for the higher tiers, we do Zoom calls every Wednesday night, two to three hours, and every Sunday afternoon, two to three hours. We have an absolutely amazing group of people in that group. And I'm very proud. Uh, it's been almost two years now that we've been together. And we're getting ready for the Flare launch, and it's really exciting, and everything's starting to really come together. But you need to level up your knowledge, or let's just be aware that there is knowledge to level up to, 
instead of just getting stuck in that mindset that like, oh, this is what they told me and I want to hear that and it's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, but look at what's factually going to happen. Okay. And also we're going to have the free resource. So MickeyBFresh.com will not be just me. It'll be a bunch of different contributors that my team and myself have brought together to provide different perspectives on what's going on in the XRP Ledger community, in Songbird, in Flair, on the side chains with different perspectives and different strengths. So I think it'll give a different uh, perspective for the community instead of just the same old headlines and other things that already, you know, people have resources for. But this is one thing I felt like was lacking, um, you know, regarding that's why I made it the DeFi standard because I saw DeFi was going to be the big thing and it's going to be the big thing with XRP too. It's just, we're just about to hit that brink. All right. So it's not banks, it's you. I'm Mickey B. Fresh, and I'm out. Applications, but we need you guys to build the future. We need you to tell us what you need. We need you to build things. XLS 20 uh, 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 is imminent. The AMM solution is going to be deployed. You know, um, we're going to see more enterprise DeFi applications. Introducing the new XRP Ledger sidechain that we have developed from Pierce's technology together with Ripple and compatible with EVM. Join us to see what this means. Thanks to the operability of smart contracts, we can now unlock the full potential of DeFi in XRPL. A new world of possibilities is unlocked for XRP thanks to the sidechain with EVM. The EVM sidechain uses XRP as its native token. You don't need to use any other currency to access. Built with the powerful Tender Mint protocol and carefully customized for XRP Ledger, it allows to achieve around 1,000 transactions per second using the Ethereum virtual machine. Easily move your XRP and assets between the XRP Ledger and the EVM sidechain thanks to the new bridge. It is very easily accessible thanks to MetaMask and XM Wallet and allows fast and secure interoperability between both networks. Check all your transactions with the Explorer that we have created for the network and have control of all your assets. Created by Peersist in collaboration with Ripple. DevNet, available now. Um, there's been a redesign of sidechains. Um, we can't put all of the DeFi functionality we'd like to have in the XRP Ledger main chain. We would lose its capacity to provide great payments. We cannot do it. So in the next half of the year, we're going to be focusing on sidechains to allow people to build fully functional dApps. We're going to have an EVM-compatible sidechain. We'll allow assets to move. And this will provide a good list of advantages. One of the important ones is horizontal scalability. The X however many transactions we make the XRP ledger able to do, that's how many transactions per second it's going to be able to do. And people are always going to want more. And with sidechains, you can create additional ledgers or additional chains that have their own transaction per second limits. And so you get that horizontal scalability, right? In almost any other space, if you want more capacity, you fire up another server, you get double the capacity. You fire up another one, you get you know, another 30%. You can't do that on blockchains, right? You can't just fire up another XRP ledger or instance and have another 1,500 transactions per second or something. So sidechains will give us that capability. It will allow assets to move from chain to chain so you can have premium assets if you really like Ethereum as your asset, but you want the XRP Ledger smart transactors, you can have that.